What's up YouTube? Jeff back from SamuGuru.com. Today on the very exciting Samsung video for you guys. And today we're doing the first 10 things you need to do with One UI 8. Samsung is rolling out the One UI update around the globe, starting with the S25 series. It just started yesterday on September 15th. We have a full schedule below. If you guys want to find out when your device is going to get it, you can go to SamuGuru.com. You can also find your latest Samsung news, tips, tricks, tutorials, and reviews. I'll drop the link below to our full schedule, but make sure you bookmark the website. Also set us as a preferred source in Google News. It really helps us out. We have a short tutorial on how to do that. If you're in the US and you're buying a Galaxy S26 device in January of 2026, you can get a free case, cleaning kit, desktop phone stand, 65 watt charger, and more. Tap on the orange banner at the top. Go ahead and tap on the S26 Ultra. Put in your phone number, email, or both. You'll get a link to order on launch day through us, which is our affiliate link. It goes directly to Samsung. That's how we fund the program. We cover all the shipping costs and everything like that. You guys pay nothing additional and you get all these extra bonuses as well. Helps us run the website, the YouTube channel, and also give back to the people who read our content, who watch our content, and we really enjoy doing that. Check that out the link in the pinned comment description below if you guys are interested in that. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the very first thing. The most user-facing feature in One UI 8 is this brand new adaptive lock screen clock. And it is really cool. You guys can see that I have it right here. This lock screen clock only works with pictures of pets or people, uh, animals or people. If you long press on your lock screen to edit and you tap on the lock screen clock styles, you'll see it's actually the second style right here. You see it actually animates a little bit with the one and the two. And you can move this around and position it wherever you want and it adapts to the object, the person or the animal that's on your wallpaper. Now there's a couple of restrictions to be aware of here. First of all, if you change the position, it's kind of hard to get it back to where you previously had it. You guys could see that based on my original positioning I had on the lock screen. It's kind of hard to find that exact positioning again because of the way the computation works. Also, you do have to set your wallpaper directly through the wallpaper gallery option on the lock screen uh, because if you set it through a third party application, it's not going to be able to do the computation properly for this to work. So what I mean by that is if you were to go back into your apps and find a third party app, like I used one for a wall and Thematica, and you were to choose one of these images, even if it had a person in it, and you were to set your lock screen wallpaper from here, the adaptive clock option is not going to work or it's not gonna work properly because of the way Samsung does the computation. It's built into that lock screen editor. But this is a really cool feature. It's a little finicky, and again, you do have to play around with it a little bit to get it to work. But once you do play around with it, I think it is worth doing because Samsung didn't just copy Apple's lock screen customization style or their clock style. They tried something completely different, and I really do think it's unique and worth the effort in the end. Up next, let's talk about Secure Folder in One UI 8. And Secure Folder does have quite a few changes. In One UI 8, Samsung made Secure Folder quite a bit more secure, so to speak. And there's one option that's very useful. I'll show it to you guys. You can see my Secure Folder icon is not there. That's because you can now hide the secure folder. To retrieve it, you go to your quick toggles and long press and then put in your pin and then the secure folder will be revealed. So to enable the hide secure folder option, you just come right here and you go to hide secure folder and then you can hide it and then you won't be able to unveil secure folder until you go back to the quick toggles, which is a lot better than the way this was implemented before. Now, in addition to the hide secure folder, you also have quite a few other options. You can still hide apps and things like that. But one of the other most useful options is you actually have all separate apps, of course, as usual for secure folder like you did before. But now you also have this option under security settings to show secure folder apps in the share panel or not. You can turn this on or off. And again, Samsung also made improvements to security by implementing secure folder with the Android private space API instead of using a work profile, which was previously causing a lot of security issues. In fact, some people's photos in secure folder were leaking as a result of this. Then the other thing you should set up is you now have the ability inside secure folder to have separate biometrics for your secure folder. So not just the biometrics you use to get into your phone, but separate biometrics that only work in secure folder. So if you put in your pin, you'll be able to set up a fingerprint here and this fingerprint will only work in secure folder. It won't work necessarily anywhere else if you don't want it to. You see how here, this one, if I put this here, it'll show me it doesn't match. So you can have one to get into your phone and you could have a completely different fingerprint to get into your secure folder, which is in fact a really, really good option. So if you don't wanna have the same fingerprints on both, that would be very nice. And in fact, 
they kind of explain this right here as well, how to set up the fingerprints just like they do in your original onboarding flow. So new hiding of secure folder, new security protocols, uh, the fingerprints, it allows you to set up different fingerprints for each one. You can enroll a separate fingerprint here that will only work in secure folder. So in fact, let me show you guys that really quickly because I think this is a pretty cool feature. This finger is not set up to unlock my phone. There are some new options in the Now Bar and the Now Brief, so you should definitely check those out. Samsung added quite a few new things. If you go to Content to Include for your Now Brief, you've now got quite a few additional options that weren't there in One UI 7. Not all of these are going to be the most useful for everyone, but I recommend just, you know, playing around with them and see what works for you. If you go to the Now Bar, you'll also find a few new options as well. If you go to the Now Bar, we've added a few new things here in Now Bar as well. And you might want to just turn those on and see if they work. Now, a lot of these like smart things and, you know, those kind of things I find are very helpful. And of course, Maps as well, you need to allow notifications for Maps if you want to have that on the Now Bar. That's the case with a lot of these apps. If you don't have notifications enabled for the settings, then they won't show up on the Now Bar as well. But Samsung has added quite a few new things to the Now Bar and Now Brief. You should check it out and see which of those options are useful for you. Samsung also added a brand new Read Aloud feature to the Now Brief in One UI 8. If you go into your Now Brief, you'll be able to go up here to the top and it will actually read your Now Brief aloud. Now, of course, you need to have the volume up, which I didn't there but it'll read each part to you and you can of course pause this or skip to the next section if you want. So this is really a nice feature. Uh, I kind of enjoy using it just to kind of have it go through some of the news. Hopefully as the Now Brief gets more and more useful, this read aloud feature will be something that a lot of people will want to take advantage of. But kudos for Samsung for continuing to try to improve the Now Brief. It seems like they're really invested in trying this and hopefully it's not a feature that they're going to abandon because I do think it has a lot of potential for the future. Up next, Samsung added the audio eraser feature to the gallery. So if you have a video inside your gallery, one thing that you can now do is you can erase audio. So if you turn up the volume here, you'll see the audio eraser option come up and then it'll automatically erase any background noise that's unwanted in this video. So this is a really nice thing to have incorporated into the gallery itself. It was there previously. Of course, you could do it manually in the editor, but having this additional option to get it surfaced as soon as you're watching a video in the gallery is a very useful option indeed. There are two new wallpaper features in One UI 8. If you go into wallpaper and style, go to change wallpapers. First, you'll see suggested wallpapers right here. So Samsung is using AI to surface some images that it think would be great for wallpapers. You can choose them or not, but you can go through the suggested images. And basically it's gonna be pictures of people and places is what I've noticed. And sometimes if you download wallpapers, it will pull them out, but it does do a nice job with some wallpapers, you know, like some photos that I've taken of places, especially like with floral stuff or my kids of surfacing images that I might want to edit and turn into a nice wallpaper. So you should at least check this out. And then there's also the brand new dynamic wallpapers down here, which we first broke over at Sammy Guru as well. And if you turn this on, you essentially have a bunch of different options. You've got different styles you can choose from down here. Basically, it changes throughout the day with the time and the gradient moves around in different patterns depending on which of these four styles that you pick. But they're definitely very cool. There's two different options you can choose from. Each of the styles is slightly different for each of those options. So definitely give these new wallpaper features a look in One UI 8. Next, you should turn on call captions in One UI 8 or make sure it's on by default in your version, your region. So if you go into settings, we have this new option right below record calls, which was introduced in One UI 7, which is called call captions. Now what call captions does is it will show what each person says on the screen. So if you're in a loud environment, you'll be able to easily see what the other person is saying. And of course, this is also something that they kind of spun off from their translation feature. So you do have different languages here to get those call captions. And this will show you the different language packs that you have available for download. You can download all those that are relevant to you. This really is a useful feature. And I found that sometimes when I'm out and about and I'm having trouble hearing my wife on the other end, if I am out in the city and I need to hear what she's saying, it can be a very useful feature for sure. And Samsung is just trying to use AI in more ways. And I think they're really doing it better than any other OEM right now. There is a brand new multitasking feature in One UI 8. And that feature is the brand new split screen multitasking feature. So I'll show you guys how this works. Let's say you have one application like X open right here. And let's say I have another application like my gallery that I want to open in this instance. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop it into split screen view. 
Now, previously you could only do this split screen view to a certain degree, like a 60-40 split, but now you can go all the way to a 90-10 split, 90% with one app and 10 for the other, which adds a little bit of dynamic for this like peak style multitasking. You still have your swap windows and all that kind of stuff, but being able to do the 90-10 split is very nice for when you want to concentrate on one app and then go immediately back to working in both apps simultaneously. Of course, this still works. You know, you got your pop-ups as well. You can utilize the multitasking with split screen and pop-up view at the same time, which of course is one of Samsung's biggest strengths. I'll mention a few other things really quickly before we go. Um, these aren't really things to try, but just upgrades you should be aware of. Live notifications, they do not disappear anymore. So for instance, if you go into your clock and you set a timer, so let's say we set a timer for five minutes and we see our live notification up here. Previously, if you had live notifications, some of them would get dismissed if you did clear all for your notifications, like Google Sports Scores. Those never happen regardless of the type of live notification in One UI 8. Samsung also brought Portrait Studio to a wider array of subjects. You now no longer can only use Portrait Studio when it comes to people. You can use Portrait Studio when it comes to pets as well. So having that ability is really nice. You can take a photo of your pet and turn it into a really cool looking portrait using AI. And if you look at some of the, it's kind of inspired by some of these new wallpapers they have in One UI 8. You can see like the little dog wallpaper here that they introduced with the Fold 7 and the Flip 7. That's a really nice new feature. Samsung also added some brand new features for specific for larger screens like tablets and foldables where you can see more information on the screen at the same time. Like the AI side-by-side -side edit, you can see the before and after of your photo and also floating windows, which let you get more kind of information on the screen and you can move around those AI suggested replies, you know, spelling suggestions and things like that as you see fit. Finally, we have the brand new Samsung DeX based on Android's desktop mode and a brand new redesigned DeX mode with multiple desktops inside the tablets on One UI 8, which is right now exclusive to the Tab S11 until One UI 8 arrives on other tablets. So these are some of the best features to try with One UI 8 on your brand new device. Again, some of the most user-facing features out there are small for One UI 8, like the adaptive clock or the redesigned secure folder, but all these things add up to a really great experience on top of the massive changes that Samsung put into One UI 7. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe. Definitely check out the website, sammyguru.com. Check out the Mystery Box program if you're interested. Appreciate you guys checking out this video. Drop any questions below, and I'll see you in the next one.